This program is made possible by the friends and partners of Stevenson Ministries and the Houston Faith Church family. Revelation 19.6 says this, it says, Alleluia for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Y'all were not nearly excited enough about the fact. Come on, the Lord God omnipotent reigns. The Lord our God, He is the omnipotent God. Omnipotent, He is the all-powerful God. He is the one that has unlimited universal power and authority and might. And we as his people should stand strong in the greatness of our God. Come on, our God is a great God. He's a big God. He's the almighty God. And we really should have faith in the great power of our God. This morning, we're going to talk about the power of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because, listen, God's kingdom is a kingdom of power. Uh, No one can stand, really, in any comparison. No man, no source, no anything to the greatness and the power of our God. Because God is the source of all power. Hallelujah. And so we could stand here all day when we think about heaven and we think about the glory of heaven and the power of heaven and everything that happens in the heavenlies. We could stand and talk about that, our God, his kingdom in the heavenly realm forever. Praise the Lord. But I want you to know that that same glory and that same power is also in the earth because God's kingdom has been established not just in the heavens, but in the earth. Hallelujah. We know that the kingdom of God was established through Jesus Christ. And so John chapter 13, verse three said this, Jesus, knowing that the father had given all things into his hands. God put all things, he put all power, he put all authority, he put all might, he put all dominion into the hands of Jesus. And the scripture uh, says here, uh, because Jesus had come from God and was going back to God. So we know that through Jesus came the power of God to the earth. And the good thing is that when Jesus came to the earth, he came as the power. Put up on the screen, please, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I want you to look at this scripture here. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23 and 24. It says, but we preach Christ crucified... Then it goes on to say, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. So we preach Christ crucified. First of all, crucified. When you, when you read about crucified in the New Testament, we're not just talking, or, or once you get past the Gospels, basically from Acts on, we're not talking about the suffering servant hanging on the cross dead. That's why like we don't wear crosses that have Jesus hanging on them because Jesus isn't hanging on the cross anymore. Hallelujah. When we hear resurrection, we're speaking of the activity, uh, the event of the cross of Christ, which is Christ crucified, Christ resurrected, Christ ascended, and then really Pentecost in that the power came back into the earth. Hallelujah. So the Bible says here that we preach Christ or we preach the cross and it's Christ, the power of God. Christ came in the full power of God. Jesus Christ. Christ not being his last name, not being his name. Christ being a description of Jesus. Christ being the one upon whom power was put. The man that came from heaven upon whom God put all of his power. And so God established the earthly kingdom of God through Jesus Christ, the power. And it says in 1 Corinthians 4, 20, for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. This is not just a story we're telling. 
about the good news of Jesus Christ coming as the Savior and the Redeemer of the world. This is not just a word, a story. It carries in it the very power of God. Hallelujah. Real power. We're talking about demonstrated power. We're talking about not even just power that's far off that we have to imagine. We're talking about real power in the earth. We're talking about power that's demonstrated. We're talking about a power that is divine, not a power of man. We're talking about a power that is eternal forever. Never fades, never dies, never goes away. We're talking about a power that is glorious. Well, the power of God came with Jesus. And so this morning I want to talk just about a couple of things that the power does. Glory to God. Uh, turn with me in uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Because we have to understand that this power is important. We need to know the purpose of the power. We need to believe in the power. We need to have faith in the power. So the first thing that we see here, Romans chapter 1, verse 16, it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation, for everyone who believes. The first thing that we see this power does, the gospel of Jesus Christ brings the power of God for salvation in its fullness. We're saved by the power of God. Hallelujah. And, and salvation in its fullness, soteria. That means it, it, it ties into healing. It ties into to being whole. It ties into prosperity, having nothing lacking. The power of God brings salvation to our life. Sure, it brings the first time experience of salvation. Uh, it says this actually in John chapter 1 verse 12. It says, but as many as received him, speaking of Jesus, he gave them power to become sons of God. So it's by the power of God that we're saved. It's by the power of God that we're reconciled to God. It's by the power of God that our conscience is made clean. It's by the power of God that we're forgiven of our sins. It's by the power of God that we can come into right standing with God. It's by the power of God that we're sanctified. It's by the power of God that we're justified. Come on. It's by the power of God. When we get saved, power on the inside takes hope, causes us to stand up. Our dead spirit comes alive unto God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We are, we're made a new creation. All of our past is behind us. Our old nature goes away. And we're, we're stood up with a new nature as a new creation in God by the power of God. This is a real power. This is a life-changing power. Hallelujah. And it's, it's the power of God for salvation, meaning healing. It's by the power of God that we're healed. And many times, most of the time, when we think of the power of God, we think of, number one, probably being saved, because we know that's by the power of God. But we think of, we think of like something drastic. Like, like in the moment, you know, this, this power comes on the scene. Hallelujah, that does happen. And in that moment, you know, we're drastically healed or we're drastically delivered. Something happens like that. That is done by the power. The power does do that. It can do it in a loud moment. It can do it at a quiet moment. It can do it when hands laid or, are laid upon you. It can do when the preaching of the word is taking place. The preaching of the good news, the preaching of the truth, the power comes, the power is present. And it is a power whereby we can be healed. There's absolutely no reason why a Christian has to be sick. Come on, either we're going to believe the Bible or we're not. Come on, here at Houston Faith Church, we either believe the Bible or, or, or you have to say something else. The Bible has many accounts of Jesus healing them all. Never did Jesus say no. Never did Jesus turn someone away. Never did Jesus say, I'm teaching you a lesson. Never did Jesus say, you have to wait. Everybody that came in faith asking 
And that's why we have to believe in the power. We have to believe in the power. We have to believe in the power in preaching. We have to believe in the power of hands being like whatever, however the method is coming, we have to believe in the power because if we can believe in the power, listen, it only takes two things to create a miracle. And that's the power of God, which is always present, never lacking and always enough. And somebody's faith, somebody's belief, once those two things touch, boom, the connection is made. A miracle happens. The body is healed. Deliverance comes. Every time. Every time. Every time. Hallelujah. And so this is the power we love. We love to talk about the power. Come on, we love to talk about the power. At least this group here, we love to talk about the power. We love to sing about the power. But I believe that we ought to see the power. Come on. We ought to see the power demonstrated. And listen, there's there's no reason why power can't be present at any moment. All we have to do is believe. Today we're believing in the power of God. Hallelujah. There is power to heal a body. There's power to deliver. Hallelujah. I believe in the delivering power of God. You know, part of my testimony is I got got radically delivered from, from fear. All kinds of fear. The two classes of fear levels of fear, types of fears, and God just delivered me. Hallelujah. He delivered. My testimony is he didn't deliver me like in a one-time moment. I just didn't have like a one-time moment. I just had a, like a a gradual deliverance because that's still the power of God. And so that's why this morning in the offering, I was talking about not giving up. We have to not give up on the power of God. If we'll really believe the power, then we won't find ourselves giving up on something that we should be having. Somebody smoking and not wanting to be a smoker, there is power to deliver you. Oh, but I've prayed once, it didn't work. So you're going to give up on the power? Are you going to say the power isn't real? Try again. Pray again. Quote the word again. Come on, run around the room and act like it's so again. Right, Miranda? Right? Stand up for a minute. These two here needed a baby. They needed a baby. And you know what happened for years? They, it just wasn't happening. It wasn't happening. They would pray in and, you know, everything they knew. And they would come to the office and we were working and we were working. And then just one day, just one day, something clicked. Boom. Guess what? Baby. Come on. By the power of God. Five years. It was five years. I want to say thank you for not giving up. I want to say thank you for continuing to believe in the word and in the power of God. Hallelujah. The power is real. We must believe in the power. The power to heal us, the power to deliver us. This is important. Turn with me in Matthew chapter 22. Verse 29 here. Now Jesus, this is Jesus speaking. He implies here that it's important for us to know the power of God. Jesus made this uh, statement and he was talking to the Sadducees here. I'll just back you up for a moment and tell you the the context of what's going on. He was talking to the Sadducees uh, who did not believe in the resurrection. And uh, they were asking him a a question. Really, they were trying to trick him about something in heaven, uh, a a theory about what was going to go on in heaven. And this is how Jesus answered them in, in 29. Jesus answered and said to them, you are mistaken. The King James says you are in error not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. 
Jesus is saying we should know the scriptures and the power of God. If we don't know the scriptures and the power of God, we're going to find ourselves in error. We're going to find ourselves being mistaken. We're going to find ourselves having excuses. For why I'm not seeing what the Bible says about Christianity. I'm not seeing about what the Bible says, my rights, my benefits, my privileges as a child of God. I'm going to make an excuse for why I remain in lack. I'm going to make an excuse for why I don't, I don't need to go after healing. Oh, no, no, you have erred. Because you don't know the power of God. Because Jesus already hung on the cross and gave his life and went down into hell and defeated the devil and sickness and disease and pain and rose up on the third day for you, for your body, for your life. He already did it. I say this all the time, but I hold before me, I do not want to get to heaven And know that Jesus paid for something. He already paid for it that I did not possess. Have you ever, have you you thought about this, what it would be like to buy the most precious gift, to save up all of your, all of your substance, to sacrifice and to have the most valuable and precious gift and to give it to someone and then them never open it or them never use it. That's that's what it would be like for us to not go after healing when Jesus already paid for it. He sacrificed his life so that we could be well. He sacrificed his life so that we could be free, not in bondage. We need to know the power of God. Paul made this statement in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18. Uh, Of course, he's praying by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, praying the perfect will of God. And he said that he wanted us that we should know the exceeding greatness of his power that is toward those who believe. That we should know. Every believer should know the exceeding greatness of his power. We're to know that. We have to have a pursuit of that. Not just, oh, I read that, I get it. No, 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 I don't think so. (laughs) If you can say it like that, you, you haven't really got it yet. Because this power is continual and it's in every aspect of our lives. Hallelujah. And so we're to know, when you break down that word know, it it means comprehend. So we are to comprehend the power of God, but it also means to experience. So we are to comprehend and experience the exceeding greatness of God's power toward us, not withheld from us, not far off, toward us who believe. Hallelujah. Do you believe? Am I speaking to believers today? Hallelujah. We are to know the power of God. We are to have faith in the power of God. The apostle Paul made this statement in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 4 through 5. He said that my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. We've got to know the power. Listen, the Bible says that that as as the days progress, that darkness is going to cover the earth. And and gross darkness, it says, is going to cover the people. And the way that we stay out of that darkness, the way that we stay out of, of that, that thing, the evil of the world that's consistently trying to encroach in every believer's life is the power of God. That's how we do it with the power of God. We must know the power. We have to pursue the power. 
We have to, sometimes just like everything else, uh, we, we create a topic. Lord, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn more about this. I'm going to learn more about your goodness. I'm going to learn more about prosperity. I'm going to learn more about, uh, you know, the grace of God. I'm going to, at some point, you need to make sure you, you are going after the power. Amen. To know the power, experience the power. Sitting in the presence of God, getting under the power. Because it's by the power that everything changes. It's by the power of God that these things are done. <clears throat> so the, how do we know the power? How do we do this? We have to know the power source who in the earth in our life is the Holy Spirit. Amen. And this is why uh, there's so much controversy in the church about the Holy Spirit. Because people don't really like the power side of the gospel. They like Jesus the power, but they don't like power present today. It's true. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that's been given to all men. He's been given by the power of God. He is the representation of the power. Christ, the power of God. Christ, the one upon whom the Holy Spirit was put. So we could say Christ, the power. We could say the Holy Spirit, the power. I'm just going to read a couple of scriptures to you. John 14, 16 and 17. Jesus said, and I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you will know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. When we get saved, the power of God comes. We're sealed with the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 1, uh, verse 13 and 14. In Him, Jesus, you have also trusted after you've heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of His glory. So we get saved by the power of God and the very power of God itself through the Spirit comes to live on the inside of us. And that's why we have to know the Holy Spirit. We have to know Him well. We have to have relationship with the Holy Spirit because He is the power. Christ in us, the power in us, the Spirit of God in us is the hope of glory. It's the hope for your life is you knowing the power that is in you. Hallelujah. Jesus said that this power comes from the power uh, that is on high, that when we receive him, we're endued with a power from on high. So we get the power on the inside of us and we're to know that power. The fact that we possess this power in us, the very spirit of God himself, the very spirit of Jesus himself, the Holy Spirit is what makes our religion different from every other religion. It was the promise of the Father that Jesus would come to the cross, that we would be saved, we would be reconciled to Him, that He would send the promise, the Holy Spirit. It's been God's intent all along from way back when, once He lost man, uh, we see it in Ezekiel, His plan was to get His Spirit, His power back into people. And so the power within us and then the, uh, in salvation and then a subsequent event called the baptism of the Holy Spirit where the power that's sealed in us now comes upon us, which is evidenced by speaking in tongues. And that is a power that comes upon us and clothes us. Now we're not just sealed, but now we're soaked now we're just saturated. Now we're totally submerged under this power that is the power of God. The power of God. Not the power of ourselves. Not the power of a religion. The power of God. 
the power that changes everything. The power that spoke the world into existence resides in me and upon me and in you and upon you. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 4, 7, we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of ourselves. This is what makes us Christians. Christ, the one upon whom power was put, Christians, little Christ, ha, ah, ah, ha, like Christ, the ones now upon whom is God's power. Really, we're not waiting on power. We see an account in the Bible, I think it's in Mark 6, where, where Jesus said uh, there was power present to heal them. Really, because Christ is the power, and the Holy Spirit is the power, and the power is in me, and the power is on, on me, and the power is in you, and the power is on you, the power is present at all times. We're not really trying to wait and, and, and pull power down. We're really just believing and connecting with the power that already is. Power is not far away. It's not hard to get to. It's not something that we can access. It's right on the inside of us. We just have to believe. Hallelujah. But we are Christians. I love that. When we say Christians, we, we should think, wow, Christ in me, the hope of glory, power in me, because that changes everything. The Holy Spirit was given with the responsibility. He comes to live inside us because he came with the responsibility to work the power of God in us. That's his job. And the Holy Spirit will always do his job. The Holy Spirit came with the responsibility to confirm the gospel in us. To confirm the word to make a, it a reality. Mark Hankins says it this way. I love the way he says it. He says the Holy Spirit came uh, to make a theology a reality. The Holy Spirit is the one that takes it off the books. Takes the words off of the page, the truth of God, and makes it alive, makes it a reality in us. Not just something we're reading, but something we're having, something we're living, something we're experiencing. That is the power of God in us. The power is present. So we see Jesus had power. Uh, we know that the Bible says, of course, he, he, was, he came uh, as God in the flesh, so the Holy Spirit was already in him. Uh, we know that he was baptized in water, and when he came up out of the water, the Holy Spirit descended upon him, and he was clothed with that power. That began his, his miracle ministry. Up until that time, Jesus had done no miracles. He had done nothing like that. But once the power came upon him, he began to set the captive free. He began to heal the sick. So Jesus had the power and he went out in power. Now we have the power and we are to be out about in life, living life in the power, with the power of God. So we get this power and I want to talk this morning just briefly about a couple of aspects of the power that I don't think we always think about. Because usually when we think of the power of God, we think of something like, wow, uh, you know, a body just got healed Somebody just got delivered. True, the power of God. But what about this? The power of God at work in the life of a believer, a one is for transformation. And this doesn't seem quite so dramatic. This is where we, we buy into the lie that I just can't change. I am how I am. I, uh, I have a problem with anger, and it's, I've had it for so long, and I just, it's, it's partly who I am. No, the power of God in us to trans.
transform us. The, it's the power of God in us that can change us. And if that power spoke a world into existence that, that wasn't even there, if that power brought your dead spirit completely to life, then that same power can transform your life. And this morning, I want you to connect your faith to the power of God that your life can be transformed. Because literally, the truth is, is that we are all, uh, we are all endeavoring uh, more and more for the image of Jesus to be uh, to be transformed, us to be transformed more and more into the image of Jesus. Our nature being made like His. We're giving a new nature, but it's the power of God in us that works that new nature and causes it to subdue or, or to squeeze out or to put it not our old self. So we don't have to live with anger. We don't have to live being impatient. See, I, I don't understand why the church doesn't want to yell and jump up and down and scream about that type of power of God. We just want to see the body healed. We, we want to see the deliverance. But listen, I want to tell you, sometimes your body getting healed or you getting delivered is going to come from you being transformed on the inside. Amen. We're looking for the outward thing, the glorious thing, the easy thing. And God is saying... Get in my word, get in my presence, get under my power and let my power change you. Under the, under the power of God, we can get a revelation that will bring healing to our body. It's not that we need to zap in the moment. Come on, I'm talking about a power that's within us to totally transform our life. Come on, wouldn't you like to be able to say, I'm not a worrier anymore? You know, in my family, we, we had the badge. We were the worriers in the family. But come on, wouldn't you like to live worry-free? There is a power, there is the power of God within you that can transform you, can transform your thinking. I heard a preacher say this one time uh, that they were, I, I don't know what they were doing with the Lord, but the Lord said to them, I can change anything about you. <laughs> or are we really not interested on the inside of us being changed that much? We're just interested in the outward thing, the healing, the deliverance, the, what, the whatever in the moment, the blessing coming in the moment. Listen. You might just be able to be blessed and blessed and blessed and blessed if you could get rid of your poverty mentality. That's only going to come from being transformed on the inside. The Lord told her, he said, I can change anything about you. Wow. Wow. Because see, we, we, get, we get pretty anchored in our excuses. I've just always been this way. I, I tried praying, nothing worked. Have you prayed like Miranda and Mopa for five years? No, usually what we do is we pray a little bit and then we, we lose faith in the power. We either think the power is not real or it won't, 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 won't work for me or I don't, I don't want it bad enough. He said, I can change anything about you and he said, all I need is one thing. And y'all know my story. I probably, I've told this a bunch of times. When I read that, I got so excited. I, I didn't even turn the page of the book. I jumped up. I was running around. God only needs one thing. God only needs one thing. He don't need a list of 10 things. He doesn't need 15 things. He doesn't need to need this, this. He only needs one thing. And he can change me. He can change my life. He can change my thinking. He can change everything about me. I was so I was flittering around my room, dancing, so excited. And then I turned the page over. Y'all remember? Yeah. And the one thing that the Lord needed was time in his presence or time under the power. Time, you know, the thing that we don't have. 
The thing that we're getting up every day and running around to and fro trying to get all the outward things done and we don't have time. I barely got time to pray for 10 minutes. I'll pray on my way to work. Well, listen, I'm glad you're praying on your way to work, but sometimes you need to desire it bad enough to get in your closet, shut your door, uh, go without a meal, go without your cell phone, shut everything down and say, I'm going to get in the presence of God. I'm going to get under the power of God. I'm going to secure my faith in the power and I'm just going to let God change me. And you know what? I'm going to do it today. And if I don't feel any different when I come out, I'll do it tomorrow. And I'll do it again the next week until I can sense that something has taken hold. There is a power to transform your life. And I just see it. We get so stuck on the outward thing. And the easy way, it's easier to come to the altar and expect that someone is going to be able to say a prayer in faith, in authority, lay their hand, release the power, and everything be okay for you. That does work sometimes. Hallelujah. Thank God it works sometimes. But sometimes there are other things. Number one... The altar worker or the minister can override, many times cannot override your lack of faith, your worry, your whatever it is. Only the power of God can do that. Hallelujah. A power to train. I mean, I think, you know, we, we everyone in here could, could think of something about themselves that they know needs to be better, that they know needs to, to change. We could just go through the love walk, 1 Corinthians 13, and probably just point out a few of those things about not keeping record of wrongdoing or not being rude, some things that need to change. But it's only the power that's going to change those things. It's the power that comes through the Spirit of God. It's not about ourself. It's not about our... And so the world, the world, because they don't know the power, they don't know the Spirit, they can't have that power in the Spirit. And so the world is looking for change. I mean, the world recognizes many times they need change. And so they come up with all these, all these steps and methods and things. And, and it's really all based in willpower. Your own willpower. Come on, and even as Christians, we get, we get, we get rooked into this very slightly. We, we try to connect, well, it's, it's Christ in me, uh, but, but it's, it's, it's you trying to take it in your own power. And your, power, your willpower is only going to go so far. Your willpower is never going to get the complete answer. It's never going to do for you uh, what Christ can do for you because only the power of God can really totally change you. And I'm talking about like deliverance and like, like healings that, you know, that last forever. I'm still living many, 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 many years now into the deliverance I got out of fear. It's not like I did it and then I, I need to go, go back to the program again and stay in the program because no, 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 that, that was complete, man. I anchored my faith in that so real, so strong until all of it was gone. Power to transform, but we got to know the power. We got to connect with the power. We got to desire the power. We got to we got to think that the power, know that the power will work, and know that it'll work for you. And that's where, uh, you know, many times we disconnect. We start thinking, "Why well, it's not going to work for me?" But it can work for you. I mean, you do have to do some Bible principles. You, you're going you're gonna to have to go after it. You're going to have to, you know, if you don't have faith in the power, you need to get some uh, power scriptures and start getting those underneath your belt. Never, never did I see in there that the power works except for these people. The power won't work for... The power is sufficient. It's given by God. It'll work every time. So we see that there's a power to transform us. And the other power 
uh, that is at work inside the believer is the power to empower us or the power to enable us. And that's, that's every bit as powerful as the, as the power that comes in a moment and, and, and makes a dead body come alive. Wow! Amen. But that same power to the same degree, to the same magnitude, to the same strength is in you to enable you in life. Amen. There's, there's absolutely no reason why every Christian can't succeed in life. We're all different. We all have different vocations. We're all called to different things. We all have different graces. We all have different abilities. But everybody is sufficient. Sufficient to get victory. Sufficient to uh, triumph in Christ. Everyone is sufficient. Or God would not be just. So we all have we all, have all of the power we need on the inside of us to enable us to live, to enable us to have wisdom, to have understanding, to have knowledge. It enables us to have a job and be good at our job. It enables us to go to school and be good in school. Did you hear me? But, but I'm just not as smart as everybody else. I didn't say you were as smart as everybody else. I said that you have a power in you. You remember the story of Brother Hagen when he was a young boy? He was very bad at school. He did not make good grades. He made D's and a few F's, and he just really struggled at school. But what happened with him was once he got uh, stood back on his feet, uh, came in contact with the power of God, began to know the power of God, the reality of the scriptures, and that when he believes something in his heart, like with salvation, and says it out of his mouth, that there is a power in that moment to create what he believes. And so as he would walk to school, he began speaking over himself. God declarations. I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. I have, he, didn't, he didn't start, you know, he didn't just stay in his excuse. He didn't stay in his past. He didn't stay in his old pattern. He understood that there was a power now that was within him to enable him. And he just confessed it. I have the mind of Christ. 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 And guess what? He went from being a D and an F student. I know that the scales are different today. That's failing. He went from being a failing student to an above average, to an A and B student. Simply by the power of God. He really does have all the power we need. He's given us all the power we need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through the power which strengthens me or enables me. It's not by my might nor by myself, but by His Spirit, His Spirit within me, His Spirit upon me that enables me. We don't have to struggle in life. Just let that sink in for a moment. By the power of God given to you through the Holy Spirit, you do not have to struggle in life. Hallelujah. I can do all. I can do what? I can do what? All things. Okay, now I want you to stop and think of the, the thing in your life that's like the hardest. Like the, the one thing that when you think of it, it's like, oh my goodness, I don't, I don't know about that. I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I'll ever have that. I don't know if that'll ever work for me. I want you to think of that right now and just say it again. I can do what? All things. All things. You can do that thing. You can do that thing. By the power of God, you can do that thing. I can do all things. I can do all things. Say it. I can do all things. Say, I can do all things. I can. I can. I can. I can. 
I can do it. Now say, I can do all things. See, it's very easy to quote this scripture to somebody else. They're, they've got a situation, but you can do all things through Christ. Who Amen. You. Yes, I can. Come on, you can do all things, Keisha, Amen. through Christ who strengthens. Nothing is too big for God. Nothing is too You can do all things. Amen. And then you wake up the next day and that thing that's looming over you is there and you're like, I just can't do it, man. <laughs> I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ, through Christ, who strengthens me. Either we believe the scripture or we don't. Either it's true or it's not. Right? And again, we're talking about a kingdom that's not just in word, but a kingdom that's in power. So as we believe that and say that, sometimes we're saying it because we need to hear it so we can believe it. But you just keep saying it and hearing it so that you can believe it. And then eventually you believe it and then once you believe it and you say it from your heart out of your mouth, boom, Amen. you can do, I can do it. And before you know it, you have done it. The power of God. I can do all things. Through Christ, through Christ, through the power, through the power that, is work, that is at work in me. In me. <laughs> There's a power. There's a power to transform us. There's a power to uh, empower us or enable us. We connect to the grace of God, which is God's enabling power by faith. Grace is connected to power. There's a grace is real. It's a it's a it's a substance. It's something that comes upon us, gives us an ability. It's connected to the power. So there's a power to transform us and there's a power to empower us or to enable us in life. There's a power for salvation, we know. So there is a power to heal us, to deliver us, to justify us, there is a power uh, to make our mind uh, clean. There is a power to make our minds right. There is a power when your mind starts racing all over the place and you're laying down at night and you say, I can't sleep because my mind is like, it's just like all over the place. Usually it's worry, usually it's fear. Something got your mind. There's a power to overcome that. There's a power to do it. But we're going to have to know the power. We can't, just, we can't just talk about the power. We can't just sing about the power. I think it was one of the old-fashioned old uh, timey preachers that said, when the church loses the power in the church, they just sing about it. We don't want to just sing about it. <laughs> right? We, we want to have it. But we got we to gotta get under... We got to get under the power. The power of God is so involved in er everything works by the power. We're blessed by the power of God. Blessings come by the power of God. It's God at work and God's power in the earth. The word works through the power that's in the word. That the name of Jesus works because of the power that's in the name. It's all by the power. We got to go after the power. And that means we have to go after the Holy Spirit, this life with the Holy Spirit. I say it every time. Every time I'm, I'm preaching this thing about the Holy Spirit, we must know the Holy Spirit and the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Not just the seal, but the baptism. Where are we speaking tongues? Yes, yes, you need to speak in tongues. Yes, you do. There's power in speaking in tongues. The Bible says that when we connect in tongues, uh, that we pray out divine secrets and mystery, things we don't even know yet. 
Brother Ed just uh, gave a testimony yesterday or Saturday he sent in. Listen to this. You need to understand that we, we can't minimize what's going on in church. We can't minimize the preaching. Oh, it's just the preaching. In the preaching, there's power. Any word that I say might carry the power that can change your life. Brother Ed just testified that uh, several months ago, back, I, I think it was in the fall of uh, last year, I had people come up that had their own businesses to minister to them. And uh, so he's a consultant. And so, you know, usually he works by himself and he goes in and helps the company and does whatever. And he said, when I stood in front of him, I prophesied that he was going to be working. Uh, he was going to be leading a team of people on a project. Well, you know what? In December, one of the largest companies in the world reached out to him. And do you know what he's doing today? He's leading a team of engineers and chemical people in the largest project in the world. The largest project in the world. Why? 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 See, see, people can sit out here and in a moment, their altar ministry is going on. They're not even connected. They're not even realizing that, that words are being spoken up here, that, 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 that faith is being activated. Come on, that power is coming alive, that things are changing for people. Why did that happen? That happened by the power of God. It happened by me hearing something and speaking something that brought the power. And now listen, the black, can you imagine the blessing that he's getting? Hallelujah. We come together in a place like this and we ought to be thinking power, man. There's bad powers right here. There's so much power in this room. Glory to God. There's power to heal you right now. There's power to deliver you right now. Power to change your life right now. We got to stop coming to church and waiting for our four point message and connect with the power. Just let the power touch you. Hallelujah. There's power. And what I have found out is this this power that's in us and this power that's upon us to transform us and enable us, sets us up for all the outward things to change. Because now when I see something, I'm not intimidated by it. Now when a symptom comes to my body, I'm not worried. I'm not thinking, oh no, what is this? I'm thinking, oh no, no, the power of God is in me and nothing gets to touch this. Nothing gets to hurt this by any means. Come on. Come on, you wake up in the morning and some type of bad report comes. Your company's laying people off. The mountain rises up. You don't shrink back. Oh no, the power of God is in me and I'm going to speak to the mountain and it's going to get out of the way. Power. Real power. Power that'll work for anything. Hallelujah. Power right now. And listen, power comes in all kinds of ways. And so you, you have to, just like this morning, I'm trying to get you out of just pigeonholing power into, into like healing or deliverance. Yes, but there's so much more that the power at work does in us. And don't pigeonhole God of how you think the power should come. Well, what we do is we have the Holy Spirit who is our God and our, and our, our, our witness and he's the one who guides us. And so if we don't know anything else to do, 
then we're just connecting with the power through the word. And we're just believing the word and confessing the word. We get in our prayer closet. We're praying the word, believing the word. We're doing that. But then you might be sitting in service and you're like, well, I need to go up and let them pray for me. If you sense that, don't sit in your seat. Don't you be thinking, I don't want people looking at me. What if it doesn't work? Who cares? If God loves you, get up. The job of the Holy Spirit will guide you into. He, his job is to guide you into your inheritance. So he'll get you in the right path. He'll get you in the right method. But you, you just have to believe the power. But I want you to know that the power is at work in you at your home. The power is at work in you at work. The power is at work in you in the car. The power is at work in you. Everywhere you are. And that's what I love about God is he's so like, he's just so, so big. And so it's every, you know, you, you have the power at home, but there's times there's power at the church. And there's times if you're not active in church, you will miss out on something in the power of God in the assembly. But you can't be the one that only runs to the assembly and never does anything at home. I believe in the power of God. Come on, we got to be believers in the power of God. Come on, our faith is not in anything but in the power of God. Hallelujah. 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 How are you going to connect with it? Just believe it, receive it. The Lord might need you to act upon something. You might have to go out. You might have to say something. You might have to do something. Power is real. The power can be quiet. Like this moment, this morning, we had a moment, we almost missed it. We almost missed it. We have to be more sensitive than that. We have to understand how the power is coming and what's happening in the moment. God can move in the, in the midst of being quiet. You're just getting quiet. Sometimes you just need to get quiet. Sometimes you need to just shut up. Sometimes you just need to stop thinking. Sometimes you just need to stop telling the Lord everything that you think that the Lord needs to know. He already knows it anyway. You probably already said it 15 times. <laughs> just sit quiet and let the power do its work. You know, we're so conditioned today in this world, in this age, move, 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 do, 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 do. You know, images everywhere, everywhere, sound. Be still and know the power of God. Be still. Be quiet. Take some moments. Take some time. God wants to be as real to you at home as He is to you in the assembly. I used to sing a song at Ramah, and it was uh, just one dose of the Holy Ghost. That is what I need, or that is all I need. Just one dose of the Holy Ghost. But when we're thinking of a dose of the Holy Ghost, we're, we're instantly thinking of shouting, which I'm all for. We're thinking of laughing, which I'm all for. Those are manifestations of the Holy Ghost, absolutely. But there's other doses. There's other flows of the power. And my job is to help you know the power of God. All of the power. So that you can access power when you are driving in your car. Or when you are at work and a symptom comes. Or you get bad news.
We got to go after the power, getting under the power. I'm going to tell you how the Lord said it to me last night. He said, getting under the influence of the power. And so when we get, when we get there, our mind instantly wants to think, can I feel something? I, it's not a feeling you're looking for. We do this by faith. We do it because the Bible says that when we draw near to him, he draws near to us. The power is not withheld from us. We're to know the exceeding greatness of his power that is toward us. I hear the power of God. It's toward me right now. But we don't look for a feeling. We can't let our mind go around thinking. And then we're, and then we're like, you know, what is, what is this doing? What is this doing? The power at work. The power at work in you to accomplish fully God's work. The power is sufficient. The power of God is sufficient in every situation, in everything about your life, in all of your flaws, in all of your struggles, in all of your weaknesses. The power of God is sufficient. And we have to know the power and we have to keep running to the power because just like I talked about this morning, this is what causes us to have a perpetual life with God. We don't get to get the power source one time. We don't get to come on Sunday and get enough for the whole week. Yes, we come, we get sharpened, we get strengthened. The love of the brethren, you know, the atmosphere of faith and power together, but then we go out, but then come Monday morning, you better go ahead and wake up and find some power and connect to the power. You can't wait, wait for that to come back only on Wednesday or for those of you that are not yet fully. Should I go ahead and say it, Lord? Is it going to come out? You think that being in church one time a week Is sufficient with all the stuff that's going on out there, all the all the trials, the tests, the temptation. You think being in church once a week is sufficient? What, oh, well, but well, oh, but we're a Book of Acts church, right? We're a Book of Acts church. We're believing like the Book of Acts. They were in the temple daily. We're 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 praying for revival, but we can't even show up twice a week. Y'all don't get to get mad at me, the love walk says. I'm just preaching the truth here. We're crying out for revival, but we can't even get people to come. You know, we got a conference for, for two days and people can't show up for two days. Ouch. Why don't, you try, why don't you try going something further in the Lord? Amen. What you might find is that you can connect with the power better, more easily, more deeply, and then you might see your life starting to change. So we don't get to bring God in the way we want it. That's not how this works. Listen, the, the number one thing about Christianity is that we lose our life Amen. for the Lord and the sake of the gospel, not just for Jesus but for the sake of the assembly, I have lost my life for the sake of the assembly. Amen. I have missed many vacations, every family gathering, not because I'm a preacher, but because of the assembly. <laughs> Better get off that real quick. I might never come back. I'm just trying to call you up. I just want you to come up. I just want you to have everything that the power of God has purchased for you. Amen. I just want you to have everything that Jesus has already bought for you. Hallelujah. But we're going to have to get under the power. Amen. And not, not try to figure it out, not try to come out. Listen, there have been times, and I can say this, I know without a shadow of a doubt, there have been times that I have been under the power of God and had no, I didn't come up with a reason. I didn't come up thinking this or that. I didn't know, but I just knew. I know the power of God. I'm under the power of God. And then later on, I could articulate. Couldn't articulate it in the moment because people want to ask you what happened or the devil wants to ask you. The devil wants to ask you what just happened. And when you can't articulate it out of your mental capacity, then he tricks you into thinking because you can't articulate it and you don't know that something didn't happen. 
No, no, no. My faith is in the Word of God. My faith is in the unseen thing. My faith is not in the feeling. My faith is, my faith is not in something that I can put my finger on right now. But I've had many, many, many times under the power of God that later on, a month later, six months later, I could then articulate that something happened to me in that moment and my life changed. I was transformed. I was enabled. Something happened to me. So we got to go we got we to gotta really pursue getting under the influence. And sometimes you got to, it takes a little time, you know, I say this all the time. Sometimes it takes me 30 minutes just to make my mind shut up, just to get myself where I can really get in the spirit. But do we want to get in the spirit? Do we want to get under the power? Is it important enough to do that? See, we, we connect so many natural things, but I can't do it. I have to have my sleep. Oh, really? No. You do need to have a good sleeping loss, yes, and a good pattern. But there are times that you may need to sacrifice some sleep for the power of God and recognize that God is big enough and able enough to give you enough strength the next day. Because again, are you doing this in your own willpower? Are you doing this in your own strength or are you doing it with God? God would never ask you to get up or God would never be wanting you to go uh, something in your, a deeper place in the closet and then not meet you in the next place to help you get through. He would not do that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Power, power. Power, power to bring salvation, power to bring healing, power to bring deliverance, power to bring help, power to bring peace, power to bring prosperity, power to bring joy, power to bring love, power to bring a new nature, power to bring a wisdom, power to do it. Power to change us, change us, Lord. By your power, change us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Power to bring a breakthrough. Power to bring a turnaround. Stop trying to make those things happen in your own strength. Get under the power. Thank you for joining Pastors Chaz and Joni today from Houston Faith Church. If you're looking for a good home church in Houston, Texas, we'd like to invite you to be our guest anytime. What you'll find is that Houston Faith Church is highly committed to the Word of God, the love of God, and the Spirit-filled life and ministry that Jesus expects. We know that everyone wants to make a difference in this life, and that the Great Commission of the Lord Jesus Christ is the main thing for all of us. You'll find your purpose here and grow strong in faith at Houston Faith Church. Find more faith-building resources on our YouTube channel or subscribe to our free audio podcast. You can also connect with us on Facebook and Instagram. See you soon.